about three weeks ago, I said this. Three ring show and one new lug. That's really clean. I've always wanted a red bike. Well. So I was just scrolling the internet one day and I came across this post. And this post had a bike in particular, a frame actually, that this person was selling. And at first glance, I didn't really care much about it. I just kind of scrolled right past it. But for whatever reason, I decided to scroll back and to take a longer and a deeper look at this bike. One, because it was a color that I don't have that I've always wanted, like the video that you just saw. Uh, and two, because it looked kind of sort of out of place. And what do I mean by that? Well, it just didn't look like a regular bike, a steel bike. One that is of NJS background, for example. Uh, so for me, whenever I even consider purchasing a bike, a new bike, there's three things that I always look for. Uh, one, that bike has to be unique. So what I mean by unique is it just has to stand out from the crowd. So because I like steel bikes and I like NJS bikes in particular, um, you know, I like steel bikes that are, for example, made from different tubings, different size tubings, um, you know, with, for example, my three range show, a Sean range show, I have the Modula Lugs. Uh, that, you know, sets it apart from the other bikes. And so that's what I mean by unique, right? Something different about it that sets it apart from all these other bikes. Um, secondly, it has to be steel. So no offense to aluminum bikes, you know, to me, I just feel like most aluminum bikes are, they all look the same. You can say the same for the steel bikes as well. But steel bikes are handmade, at least the ones that I like. So that's the difference between steel bikes that I like that look the same, and aluminum bikes that I don't really like that look the same. <laughs> um, but uh, it has to be steel for me, and that's just my personal preference, right? And then three, reason number three, is that it has to be rideable. So it could be unique, it could be steel, but if it's 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 unrideable. I mean, there's really no point for me to buy it, and that's just me. Uh, I know there are a lot of people out there who enjoy buying bikes to look at them because they're unique, they're special, you know, low pros, bandits, all those things. I have one right behind me right here, uh, and yes, I ride it. Now, if I wasn't able to ride it um, the way I wanted to, uh, I don't think I would keep it. I don't think I would have bought it in the first place. Those are the three reasons why I bought this frame. This is a frame uh, because it's unique, it's steel, and it's rideable. And I'm definitely going to ride it. I'm definitely going to shred it on the streets. And so, without further ado, let's get to it. First off, first thing you should always do when you buy a bike or a bicycle frame is to always check the box, right? Things can get shipped. Um, things can go out of place, things like that. You always wanna look, make sure nothing is popping out of the box. Now, you know, maybe it could be the, the postman's fault for that happening, but uh, for the most part, yeah, it's on the uh, person who shipped it out, the previous owner, basically. And so, looking at this box, uh, right away, I can see that it is really clean. You're looking at this side right here. There's no tears, nothing coming out of it. It's taped and boxed really, really well. I'm very, very, very surprised and very um, thankful for the person who shipped this to me. And this person definitely, definitely knew what he was doing. Um, and so yeah, you know, kind of going all the way around. There's nothing significant about this box that is troublesome, that will worry me about this box. No tears, no rips, anything like that. It is taped very, very well. And um, yeah, kudos, kudos to the person who shipped it out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Really good so far. All right, now let's go ahead and get it open. All right, let's chop these off. And 
let's go ahead and oh, I'm assuming that this is the top so let's go ahead and Closer, and this is just the opening of this. Here we go. The frame is very well packaged. Uh, this is just a frame and fork and headset. That's all that came with it. Very clean. Looks neat. Again, nothing popping out as it should. Awesome. If you ever send out a bike, is you want to make sure that the head tube, the BB, and the fork ends, basically the rear and the front fork, that they're covered like this. Right? Those are the places where you don't want it to get hit anywhere for it to be bent or anything like that. And this person again, you know, uh, this isn't the first time they shipped out something when they have it all covered like this. This is beautifully done, and again, I'm very impressed by this um, shipper right here so I, so far so good let's cross the fingers and hope everything's in place <laughs> And that's why I bought it. 
Uh, not only that, but as you guys can see, it's red as well. I've been wanting a red bike for the longest time, and I've, I've kind of skipped over a lot of frames because, you know, there's nothing unique, nothing special about them. So this one is definitely unique. It's definitely special. Um, and uh, it really, really, really is impressive. So let's go ahead now and let's take a closer look at the um, uh, uh, things that make this bike uh, basically a very unique bike in my opinion uh, and the reason why I bought it. Let's go. So let's go ahead and start with again the tubing as you guys can see here is arrow tubing. It's amazing. It looks really really cool and when you just kind of kind of feel it through it's again it's kind of oval shape it's not your very common circular shape and so the tube set is usually the the down tube right here um, the top tube right here the top tube isn't as aero as the as the down tube but it is again it's kind of it's oval as well and then of course you have the C tube right here right the C tube again it is very unique in that it is shaped in that way very very cool in my opinion so tubing again is the first thing that uh, really stood out to me and really made me go wow i definitely have to have this thing the second thing that really stood out to me were the dropouts and so the dropouts if you don't know what the, the dropouts they're in the back right the back uh dropouts and then you got the fork dropouts as well you can see here it is a Suntour uh, dropouts and Suntour dropouts were very popular in the 70s, late 70s to the um, early 80s as well. And they were on a lot of frames, uh, a lot of very top brand, uh, especially Japanese frames at that time. And so this is the 10 millimeter in the back. And then up front over here, you have the nine millimeter up front right here so that's really cool um, to have uh, the dropouts being sun tour and it's perfect because um, it you know I have the perfect components <laughs> for this I'm a huge sun tour guy if you don't know that by now uh, sun tour is my jam and so uh, I have uh, spare sun tour parts just kind of laying around and so this is kind of the perfect bike for me to put those parts um, on here in the future while we're on the fork, let's go ahead and look at the fork right here. Now, there's nothing really special about this fork. I actually don't know what kind of fork this is besides the fork ends down there. Um, but this looks like a very common um, 70s, early 80s, even modern Panasonic fork. Some Panasonic forks even today in um, modern uh, NJS frames. They look like this. They have a little cutoff right here, a kind of a diamond shaped cutoff. But besides that, I mean, it's essentially the same thing. Um, going up here, the other thing that stood out to me was this headset. So if you don't know what this headset is, it is also a Tenge headset. This is the Aero 202 headset. And so this is a very, very, very rare headset. Um, and even more rare on a track bike. Now I know that um, in my experience with some road bikes, these were actually very common in the early 80s road bikes. For example, Panasonic, they had this road bike called the AR6000 that basically came with the same sets of the tubing right here, the Tenge uh, Aero tubing. Uh, and it came with the Tenge headset. It came with everything aerodynamic basically, even with the Dora Ace AX group set I mean that's that's in my opinion one of the best looking group sets and really they were ahead of their time in the early 80s um, and so that really I mean that really I, I think this bike if you were to tell me when it was made I would go ahead and guess that it was made in the early 80s uh, most likely 1981 82 that's when the aero craze really really happened and really came about uh, in the early 80s and so the headset is really cool that's kind of a bonus there it is very dirty i don't know if you guys can see it but it's it's really dirty uh, inside and outside um and so it will need some service done and you know i actually don't mind that because with as with all my bikes um 
especially these things in the back I like to do my own service to my bicycles that way I know what's wrong and what's right with my bikes um, and then let's go to the um, seat tube right here it is a 27 uh, millimeter diameter and so that's a good thing because a lot of these tangy tubings they actually um, that's the the seat cluster right here it's usually like a very odd oval shaped um, seat post that goes on but this one is just a regular circular one uh, which is great because it just so happens that I have a Suntour 27 millimeter seat post that fits perfectly in here as well along with the other parts of the group set and so that's the bike really in a nutshell that's the frame in a nutshell right there for you guys one more time with this and it is a very 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 cool frame in my opinion it definitely needs a lot of love um but you know it's in my possession now and i'm super excited to uh kind of just have this uh, be a part of my my you know my stable of of bikes here and like all my other bikes i'm gonna ride this thing pretty hard um and i'll test it out you know we'll see how it rides on the street and things like that because this one it will be period correct kind of but i think it's going to be more um street rideable so i'm not going to have like drops on this at least i don't think i will i'll probably put like a, a riser on this uh, i have a carbon riser with a titanium stem um, hanging around somewhere um, and so that might be you know what's going on on this bike in the near future that said this bike is probably going to stay like this for a while because uh, in about a month here i'll be going back to the states for the summer and so i most likely will not be able to work on this bike until i get back which won't be until like um until august at the earliest um but you know i'm okay with that because at home i actually have another project at home as well an aluminum bike of all things i decided to grab an aluminum bike and so if you follow me on instagram which is this little thing down here on the bottom left corner go ahead if you haven't already followed me on instagram um i showed a glimpse of it on instagram uh, for you to see and so yeah i have that thing to work on when i'm back home in the states but for now i'm going to enjoy this thing i'll probably give it a quick service before i leave hong kong here for the summer but besides that it's probably just going to sit and collect dust over the summer until i get back and then we will definitely 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 get to work once i get back from the states here so one more look let's just go one more uh, around uh, just kind of go all the way around so you get a, a very good glimpse at um, the bike as a whole And there you have it. As always, man, I appreciate y'all dropping by. Let me know what you think about this frame in the comments. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Does it intrigue you? Does it bore you? What should I do with this? Should I go Suntour Superbi Pro on all corners? Should I go more modernized, carbon wheels? I don't know. Let me know what you think I should do with this frame. With that said, as always, I appreciate you guys. If you haven't yet, man, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button, like this video, and drop a comment so the algorithm can go crazy on this. We're only about 400 subscribers away from my first ever giveaway. So if you want to be a part of that, go ahead and subscribe. And once we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'll go ahead and again, I'll give away 
an NJS stem and a handlebar. Okay, appreciate y'all. And don't forget to go.